Hello, my name is Jim German, and welcome to today's episode of Kilimanjaro. Today we're going to be taking a look at the comparison between these two cordless impact drivers. This is the Bosch PS41 impact driver, and this is the Milwaukee 2462 cordless impact driver. They're both quarter inch, 12 volt impact drivers. So prices to start off with, this one you'll typically find in a kit with the 12 volt uh, Bosch drill, which I've reviewed separately, isn't particularly good, but in a kit with this, not on sale, it's usually about $130. Frequently you can, buy, you can find it on sale for about $100, and that includes two batteries and the charger and the drill. The Milwaukee usually comes by itself, um, and typically includes two batteries for about $130 or by itself it's just $80 without any batteries. Um, however, if you pay attention, you can usually find this on sale for a lot cheaper. I actually was able to pick this up for just $35 with no batteries. So if you can find it for $35, this is obviously a fantastic deal. If you can find this as the kit for $100, that's also a great deal. So let's take a look at the two and look at the differences between them and more importantly the similarities as they are pretty much uh, very similar tools. So first thing off uh, the hop you'll notice that they both have uh, quarter inch impact or quarter inch collets, nice spring loaded chucks. Um, both of them need two hands, you need to pull on the, the collet to put the bit in, you can't just uh, slide it in and it pops in. They both have an LED. This one has one LED on the bottom, which shines up. This one has three LEDs on the side, which shine on your rig piece. I like the three LEDs better. First off, it's more light. It's a little easier to see. Also, it's more likely to fall uh, where your work piece is. However, the three LEDs don't line up perfectly with the tip of a bit. So typically that's kind of being kind of a shadow. This one coming from the bottom here, it only hits the bottom side of the bit, and but it does line up a little bit better. So they both have the nice uh, for reverse levers, they both can sit in the middle to lock it. So if you drop it in your toolbox, it's not going to go, uh, you know, if something falls against the trigger. They both feel really nice. They both have rubber around them in case you're going to drop them. Um, the batteries on both of them are not protected either. So if you drop them like that, it's going to wreck the batteries. The triggers on both of them feel pretty nice. This one, I think the, the Bosch feels a little bit nicer. It's a little bit wider of a trigger, but they're both pretty good. They both have nice little battery indicators there. You can see how much power is in the battery. The, Bo the Milwaukee wins by having four LEDs though. The Bosch is only three, not really a big deal. Um, and then the only other real difference in features is that the Milwaukee has this little belt clip on it, which can be pretty useful. And uh, if you don't like it, if it catches on things, you can always unscrew it and take it off. So that's something I do like better. The Bosch has a little spot here that you could put a la little lanyard in, but um, I don't really see the point of doing that. So. Features wise, I think they're, they're pretty comparable except for the little belt clip. The thing the Bosch does have though is it's a lot smaller. So you can see here it's a lot shorter, a little bit shorter, it's not that big a deal, but it is a lot uh, shorter in this dimension here. So if you're trying to get it into a tight space, this one is substantially smaller. You can get into a substantially smaller space with it. All right, now let's check out the performance between the two. The Bosch is rated at 2600 RPMs, the Milwaukee is rated at 2500 RPMs, about the same. The Milwaukee gives an impacts per minute rating, the Bosch doesn't, um, but I found those ratings not to be particularly relevant anyway. They both use brushed DC motors, uh, not the newer brushless DC motors that are a bit more efficient. They're both running off the same 12 volt battery packs, or very similar 12 volt battery packs. Um, so the performance between the two should be pretty similar. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drive three three inch deck screws into this little piece of 2x4 here and record the times and see which one goes faster. Both batteries have been freshly charged and they're both pretty new batteries. So I'll try and put the times of how long it took to drive the three screws with both drivers uh, up there so you can see. But it seemed pretty obvious to me that the Bosch was substantially faster driving that. Um, the no load speed is pretty similar. As I mentioned, the RPM, the rated RPM is pretty similar. But the Bosch is either the impacts hit harder and therefore they drive the screw farther or there's, they come faster. It's a little hard to tell. Um, and it doesn't really matter. You know, Either way, the Bosch seems substantially faster. So. The, the Bosch, I would say, is, is quite competent at driving three-inch deck screws. The Milwaukee, you can do it, but it does struggle with it a little bit. So it's definitely a, that's definitely an advantage for the Bosch there. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them apart, and we're going to take a look at the insides to see if there's any substantial differences between how they're made up.
All right, we got these guys all broken down. Um, taken apart pretty similar. They both use Torx screws to go together. The screws are pretty similar. They both have a little clip at the bottom of the battery case um, to hold that together. They're both made of uh, glass fiber, PA6 glass fiber reinforced nylon. Uh, so some same material. That's the, the nylon you typically find in most uh, prosumer tools. Um, the only difference I did see on the plastic here is the Milwaukee tool, the overmolding, the rubber overmolding, is dovetailed into the uh, nylon plastic. So that's going to prevent it from pulling off uh, substantially. The Bosch, it's just overmolded over the top of it. So it's going to be more likely to peel off the side. Now, in practice, I'm not sure it's really a big deal. Maybe if you're using it in a greasier environment, something that'll dissolve that bond a little better, it may uh, be more likely to come off on the Bosch than on the Milwaukee. But I've used the older Bosch one um, for almost a decade and never had a problem with the overmolding coming off. So I'm not sure it's the greatest issue, but it is something that's nice to see on the Milwaukee. Okay, as for the electronics here, they're pretty similar. Uh, nice big beefy switches. They, like I said, the switches feel nice on both of them. Um, the one difference that I did see is they both have heat sinks on them to keep the electronics cool. However, the Milwaukee just has a heat sink that's uh, attached to the top of the PCB and is right underneath the motor. The motor is the part that's going to get the hottest. So that's not really the greatest. The Bosch, on the other hand, has this aluminum heat sink here that extends back past the end of the PCB and happens to line up right with the cooling fan on the motor here. So that's something nice, that, nice to see. It's going to keep those electronics a little uh, cooler, a little longer, going to make them last a little better. Other than that, they are all, almost all the conne connections on both tools are soldered on, except for the motor connection here on the Bosch is a stake on. It's one of those push-in ones. The Milwaukee, it's actually a soldered connection. It's going to take more time to assemble. It's going to cost them more, but it's going to last a little bit better. All right, now getting on to the mechanicals of the tool, we can see that the motor on the Bosch is substantially larger diameter, but the motor on the Milwaukee is longer. Um, so what's going to happen there is the the longer diameter motor is going to be a little bit more efficient. Um, there's less wasted windings going from one coil to the other coil so it's going to make it a little bit more efficient however the next thing we notice is that the diameter of the uh, hammers that hit the anvil to cause the impacts is substantially larger on the Bosch so on the Bosch it's 39.4 called 39 and a half millimeters on the Milwaukee it's only 37 millimeters so now that may not sound like a lot but the amount of inertial energy is squared when you get uh, on the outside of the radius, so the hammer here is going to have a lot more energy in it, and that's likely why we saw it cause uh, be able to drive those screws substantially faster. The other thing you'll notice as it gets all over my hand here, the Milwaukee has substantially more grease on it than the, uh, or, excuse me, the Bosch has substantially more grease on it than the Milwaukee does. There is a little bit of grease up here on the Milwaukee, but the Bosch has it all over the place. Now, typically, more grease is going to be better, um, particularly around the outside that's going to be rubbing. However, if you get grease in between the impact surfaces, that's going to dampen the impacts and lessen the force of them. Now, that grease is going to be squished out pretty quickly, and it's not going to stay in there. So, in general, I would say that the more grease of the Bosch is a better thing. Um, that's likely just an assembly thing. It's possible if you've got a different you know, a different one of these Milwaukee's, it might have more grease. It may just depend on how much they squirt it in there. But at least on this tool, the, the Bosch has substantially more grease. Um, now the greases seem pretty similar. They are a different color, um, but they feel pretty similar to me. They have the same amount of uh, sticktivity in them. Um, so they're probably pretty similar. Um, they both have a nice, it's a little hard to see on the Bosch one, but at where the anvil or yeah, where the anvil rides on, there's a nice Teflon strip underneath here to um, you know, lower the friction, more less friction there is more energy going into your, your driver, so that's a good thing. Looking at these two housings, I noticed a little bit of a difference between them. So this one is cast aluminum, as I would have expected. It's a pretty nice part, it's nicely machined on the inside. This one, on the other hand, looks a little different. That's because it's actually cast magnesium. So I did the old uh, aluminum test on it. It bubbles up when you put a little pieces of this housing in the aluminum, so it reacts with it. Now the magnesium is going to be significantly lighter than the aluminum, um, and, but it is also going to be substantially more expensive. So it's nice to see that Bosch went with the more expensive material that's going to make a lighter tool. It's going to be nicer to use. At the end of the day, the Bosch is definitely a better tool. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I'd love to see you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.